accurate, reliable, getting the facts right. News 5 in high definition starts right now. Good morning and welcome to News 5 WCYB Today. I'm Olivia Bailey. And I'm Preston Ayers. 6.30 on your Monday morning. It looks like great weather ahead for us here on this Monday. The nice weather of the weekend. David Wood continuing on in to start off at least the first part of our work week. It's comfortable this morning. Upper 50s to low 60s. for 59 in Johnson City. Around 60 in Abingdon. 58 Clintwood. 66 though. And in Greenville. A bit more muggy there. We're tracking some clouds across western North Carolina. And that's the very edge of our next weather maker that's going to be pushing in before today, just a 20% chance of a stray shower. Most of us staying very warm and dry. High stay storing well above average, about 88 later on today. That could tie the record high. The breeze very light out of the west. But we'll be looking ahead to our next weather maker that's going to bring these record highs to a screeching halt. Details in just a few minutes. A developing story we're continuing to follow this morning. A manhunt continues for someone the Greene County Sheriff's Office is considering armed and dangerous. They also say the victim from one of these crimes has died from an assault. Officials there are looking for Humberto Paulino Gomez. Uh, officials say officers responded to a home on Splatter Creek Road. That's in the limestone community. That happened around 1030 on Saturday night. They say the officers found an unconscious woman outside of the home that was taken to a hospital for treatment. Now, officers also found another victim, a man with no visible injuries. They say the man they're now looking for is Gomez. He has been charged with aggravated assault, but they say that more charges are pending because one of the victims has died. Now, he was last seen to be on foot, but officials say if you see Gomez, do not approach him because he is considered armed and dangerous. The latest from an Amber Alert issued last night in Virginia. Roanoke police are looking for a missing and endangered juvenile. They say 16-year-old Deidre Amaya Davis was taken from a relative's residence by 18-year-old Cameron Gill Williams. They're both on your screen right now. You can take a look at their pictures. Roanoke police say they have a reason to believe she is in danger. And they say Williams is currently wanted on warrants not related to this incident. They say Williams and Davis know each other. He is known to drive an older green Jeep Cherokee. If you know where they might be, you're asked to contact authorities immediately. A man is dead after drowning while trying to save his life. Officials say it happened at the Wilbur Dam in Carter County over the weekend. Crews on the scene tell us that a husband and wife were fishing there. The woman got into deeper water. Her husband and some bystanders then were trying to save her, but the husband drowned. She was taken to the hospital. The man's body recovered just before six last night. James Heaton with the rescue squad saying it's a reminder to follow safe practices when you're in the water, especially this time of year. This river is extremely cold and it's very hard to swim in the water. Um, it's very easy to be overtaken by the, the extreme cold water. Um, so, you know, tiring out, cramping, uh, all the normal dangers associated with water are enhanced by the cold temperatures of the Watauga River. There's no update on the woman's condition. The man's name has not been released. We know the name of a person that was killed in a wreck on Interstate 81 in Washington County, Virginia over the weekend. Virginia State Police say 54-year-old Carl Parks of Abingdon was driving behind a tractor trailer that was stopped for slow traffic from a previous crash. They say Parks didn't stop, rear-ended the tractor trailer, and then died at the scene. State Police say he was not wearing a seat belt. The driver of the truck was not hurt. One person is dead after a motorcycle crash in Greene County. The Tennessee Highway Patrol says 47-year-old Ronald Johnson of Greenville was driving on Highway 321 near Fallen Bridge Lane. They say he crossed the center line, exiting the left side of the road, and put him into a ditch, and that's when they say he was ejected from the motorcycle. The report done by THP says Johnson had been drinking, but they do say he was wearing a helmet at the time of that accident. The deadline to register to vote is one week away for the Virginia June primary. Locally, the ballot will include the Democratic primary for 9th District House of Representatives and a Republican primary for U.S. Senate. Election officials say Virginia does not register by party, so voters may choose one of those primaries in which to participate. Voter registration applications must be received by 5 o'clock on May 21st. You can register online or at your local voter registration office, public library, also other state offices that have been designated to do so. Voters can also check your registration status online at the state's election website. Virginia's primary election day comes up June 12th. Bristol, Virginia City Council members held a workshop over the weekend to discuss the city's budget proposal. That's another step in the process of a story we've been following for several weeks. The city manager presented the latest budget proposal that's been revised since the council heard input from the public earlier this week. 
Mayor Kevin Mumpower says the council will discuss if any further revisions need to be made. One of the main topics discussed related to how the city could save money at the jail by using inmates on a work release. So we can get them back in the community, so we can get them working. Um, that puts uh, expenses out of them being in jail, right, and actually puts them to be productive. So that's actually going to save quite a bit of money. The U.S. Embassy opening today in Jerusalem. Several Trump administration officials are there for this ceremony. Tracy Potts has more for us this morning. Jerusalem is the capital of free Palestine, inshallah. This Protests over the weekend are expected to grow today as the U.S. opens its new embassy in Jerusalem. The United States has no greater partner than Israel. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, Jared Kushner, Ivanka Trump, and other officials are in Jerusalem for this morning's ceremony. President Trump set to speak by video. Our people will be eternally grateful for his bold decision. The Palestinians who claim Jerusalem is their capital accuse the U.S. of picking sides. The Palestinian mission in Washington says, quote, this move marks the end of an era when the United States led international efforts to supposedly achieve the two-state solution. I, I think recognizing reality always enhances the chances for peace. Until the Palestinians reconcile under one flag, there will never be peace. Today's opening breaks tradition. Most of the world's embassies remain in Tel Aviv. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. A little more than 20 minutes ahead of 7 this morning. Time to get over to David to find out what our Monday's looking like. And already starting off warm out there, David. Probably don't even need a jacket at the bus stop this morning. Yeah, comfortably cool. We're in the upper 50s to low 60s. Clear skies overhead and warming up quickly today. By the lunch hour, 81 and highs today around 88 degrees. Nearing the record today, but the weather patterns may be changing this week thanks to some tropical moisture. Details in just a few minutes. The accused Golden State Killer headed back to court today in Sacramento facing 12 counts of first-degree murder. Now, he's accused of serial raping and murder will face a judge today four decades after California residents were attacked in their homes. Now, police say Joseph James D'Angelo dubbed the Golden State Killer had eluded law enforcement since the crimes began in the 1970s. Now, D'Angelo was arrested last month. That's after police linked him to the crimes using old DNA samples from the scenes and DNA from a family member on a genealogy website. A city council hearing in Cincinnati today will review the investigation of a teen's calls to 911 after being trapped in his van. Now, the coroner says that 16-year-old Kyle Flush suffocated to death last month when the rear seat of his minivan flipped over on him and trapped him. Now, he called 911 twice using his voice-activated phone, but officers never found him. The hearing will focus on if officers and the 911 operator responded appropriately to Plush's calls for help. The 911 dispatcher, meanwhile, has resigned after that happened. The Food City Career Fair kicking off today. The fair is starting at 1 this afternoon, running till 7, and it's today and tomorrow. Now, if you're interested, you can apply online or go to any of our local Food City locations during those hours. The grocery store plans to hire more than 750 people to work in all areas across the region. I think that's going on in every single one of their stores, so quite a number of hirings happening there. David, let's talk about the weather and uh, rain. Not today, but we got a lot of it headed our way. Yeah, enjoy the dry conditions today because those rain chances are going to be ramping up as we go through to this week. All thanks to an area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico sending that moisture northward closer to a front just to our north. Those will be working together to produce some rounds of rain later on this week. I'll show you how much we're expecting and when after the break. The Storm Track 5 weather team alerting you to severe weather danger. We're tracking two weather makers this week, one to our north, one to our south. The one to our north is a very slow moving front. It's going to be drifting to the south over the next few days. That's going to help increase the chance of these scattered showers and storms, especially during the afternoon and evenings. But the source of the moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, watching this area of low pressure, there's a 40% chance that it could become a very low end tropical storm or a subtropical storm over the next few days. Whether it does or doesn't, either way, the impacts from the wind, very minimal. But there's going to be a lot of moisture 
pushing to the north the next several days. Now through Friday night, rainfall across Florida, four to five inches, locally more in spots. Quite a bit of rain across Georgia and the western Carolinas, three to five inches of rain. And then closer to home, once that rain moves over the mountains, expecting one to two inches, much northeast Tennessee, southwest Virginia, but more expected in the mountains of North Carolina. Our severe threat tracker elevated the next few days today because of the near record heat. Then after that, the scattered showers and storms becoming more and more likely. Today, humidity levels are going to be on the moderate side, then high humidity levels Tuesday right into the weekend. Now this morning, fairly quiet, a lot of clear skies, but notice some clouds to our south. That's the very edge of our next weather maker. Looking ahead on our future radar today, just a 20% chance of a stray shower, but most areas are going to be staying high and dry. Looking live now from Kingsport, from Bays Mountain, 58, so comfortably cool with the sunshine overhead. The wind is calm later today. A light breeze out of the west and high soaring into the mid and upper 80s. A few spots could touch 90, and then tonight around 60 to 65. So big picture shows that area of low pressure spinning to the west of Tampa, already producing quite a bit of rain across the Sunshine State. That's actually a good thing. Southern Florida, Southern Georgia, Southern South Carolina, all these areas actually in a drought. So they could use the rain, just not all at once. As we look ahead, notice that low pressure drifting to the north, helping to bring in that rain. The front to the north, helping to squeeze out a lot of that rain. And as we look ahead closer, look on our future track today, most areas dry. Tonight's looking dry, mainly clear skies. And then tomorrow, the rain chance up to 40%, so more scattered storms popping up during the heat of the day. Now, the heat tomorrow around 80 to 85. Then on Wednesday, notice cooler air east of the mountains, 84 in the Tri-Cities. And then by Thursday, ranging from 69 in Boone to 82 in the Tri-Cities. But for today, 88, close to the record high, set back in 1962. And then tonight, down to 62 degrees. Here's Storm Track 5 seven day forecasts. High staying above average, even with more clouds, the bare chance of rain, but at least we'll be cooling into the low 80s. Best chance of rain Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as the area of low pressure passes overhead. Then, as it moves to our north this weekend, rain chances go back down to 40%, more of the typical pop up thunder showers. Looks like it's going to stay humid the next several days. Definitely a warm way. How hot were we yesterday exactly? Yesterday. Move, move that piece of paper. Oh, goes sorry. 86. I'm, I'm hope, covering we up the results. The weather center sorry. We, we moved everything. in and, and, and covered <laughs> That's up things. That's all right. Inside. Glad to have visitors. 86 <laughs> yesterday. But you know, when it's hot outside, and it was this weekend, you can head up, and that's a good way to, to beat the heat. Maybe to the top of Rome Mountain. Temperatures there in the low 70s over the weekend. But the one thing you weren't finding there, there was some green leaves. It's just a beautiful day to be up here, and the breeze is nice, but it was funny coming up and just feeling like spring hasn't even hit. Well, as temperatures continue to stay warm in the week ahead, rain chances that Dave was talking about going up the trees and the higher elevations should begin to, to green up soon. You know, the summer will, or this early summer, late spring, whatever we call this weather, will eventually make it to the top of Rome as yep, well. So. That's right. Still one of the most beautiful views around yeah, the Tri-Cities. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily, we didn't have any of those massive storms that, that much of the country saw this weekend. Check out the torrential downpours in this video. This video was taken in Texas. Now, in addition to those heavy rains, the state also experienced lightning definitely so much rain coming down there you can't even see really out yeah. the window wow some severe weather hopefully <laughs> as our rain moves in we won't be dealing with any severe weather late throughout the week but when you guys will watch that and we're back with more of news five today coming up here in just a moment 12 minutes before we hit seven o'clock on your monday Many women will use some method of birth control in their lifetime, but for some, the side effects may outweigh the benefits. Many women cite depression as they, the reason they discontinue their use, and prior research has linked depression with various types of hormonal contraceptives. Now, a new study says there's not enough evidence to make that claim. Barb Consiglio has the details. Gina Carlo Magno has suffered with depression in the past and worried about how hormonal birth control might affect her mood. Sometimes with those hormonal imbalances or you're trying to adjust to a new birth control, sometimes those emotions get, you know, out of whack. It's a fear that doctors hear often from their patients. We live in a, a very media savvy age and a digital media uh, presence where uh, if one person or a few people end up having a, a severe side effect from a medication, uh, all of a sudden that really gets amplified to every single person. So to ease patient concerns, Dr. Brett Worley and his team at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center reviewed thousands of studies on the mental health effects of contraceptives. The research included data tied to various methods of 
of birth control, including pills, injections, and implants. And in every instance, their findings were the same. The biggest misconception is that uh, hormonal contraception leads to depression. And uh, uh, for most patients, that just doesn't seem like it's the, the case. Researchers reviewed the use of birth control in adolescents, postpartum women, and those who had a history of depression. Overwhelmingly, um, this is a safe method, and, and women should feel comfortable making this choice. Worley believes patient concerns are valid and wants women to continue having an open and honest discussion with their doctor. He goes over the facts and he went through everything with me and I kind of felt, all right, I, I feel confident that this is the best choice for me right now. At Ohio State Wexner Medical Center, this is Barb Consiglio reporting. News 5 is teaming up with Food City for its charity challenge. Ten local charities are competing for $100,000 across Food City's several locations. And for the past two weeks, you've been hearing about some of those nonprofits. And today we're telling you about a program that encourages young girls through activity and relationship. Girls on the Run is a program that works with young girls across the country. And the program serves more than 1 million girls nationwide each year, teaching them to, them to be joyful, healthy, and in and confident in the Tri-Cities more than 7100 girls have participated over the last decade. Now this program not only teaches girls to run but also important lessons in life. Treat others how you want to be treated. Telling yourself that you're beautiful inside and out. Now these girls also say they'll form meaningful relationships that may last a lifetime. If you want to learn more about this charity or any of the other nine, you can visit our website WCYB.com for more information and you can vote for your favorite charity. Well, checking back in with David for your drive into work this morning. David, Base Mountain already looking beautiful with that sunrise this morning. It is a pleasant start, hardly a cloud in the sky and then we're tracking a little bit of fog locally dense including around Harlem, Kentucky by 8 o'clock around 63 highs today well in the 80s, we we'll need the sunglasses, sunscreen, very small chance of a shower, but most areas staying dry as we aim for 88 this afternoon. Heading out headlines after the break. 656 here, you're heading out headlines. A manhunt continues for someone the Green County Sheriff's Office considers armed and dangerous. Officials say officers responded to a home on Splatter Creek Road in the Limestone community around 1030 Saturday night. They say officers found an unconscious woman outside the home that was taken to the hospital for treatment. Found another victim, a man with no visible injuries. But the person you're seeing on your screen, that's Humberto Paulino Gomez. He's been charged with aggravated assault with more pending because it's reported that one of the victim has died. Now, Gomez is last known to be on foot. Officials say if you see him, do not approach him because he is considered armed and dangerous, but do contact authorities immediately. The latest on an Amber, uh, Amber Alert issued last night in the Roanoke area for a missing and endangered juvenile. This is the 16 year old Deandra Amaya Davis was taken from a relative's home by 18 year old Cameron Gill Williams. Roanoke police said they have a reason to believe she is in danger. Williams wanted on some unrelated charges. The two know each other. He is known to drive an older model green Jeep Cherokee. One man is dead after he drowned trying to save his wife in Carter County. Officials say it happened on the Wilbur Dam. Crews on the scene told us a husband and wife were fishing. When the woman got into deeper water, her husband and some bystanders trying to help her when the husband drowned. She was taken to the hospital. No word on her condition this morning, but the man's body was recovered before 6 o'clock last night. Watch to David, another warm day for us out there this afternoon. But comfortably cool at this hour, upper 50s to low 60s, but we're going to be warming up quickly as we go through today. In fact, by the lunch hour, already in the 80s at noon, 81, high of 88 today. A light breeze out of the west, very small chance of a shower. Most staying dry on this Monday. Rain chances will inch up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as high temperatures inch down a little bit, getting a little bit more humid. And it's a better chance of the scattered pop-up storms. And by the weekend, 40% chance those afternoon thunder boomers. Well, thank you for sharing some time with us this morning. We'll be back in 30 minutes and have the latest on WCYB.com.